The purpose of this video is to try to educate the general public on how not to dispose of a laptop or a desktop and how to take some easy steps to mitigate the risks of financial and personal disaster as a result of doing so. This laptop was discarded um, in a local town. I won't say what state, but if you know, please. Uh, well, I don't know. I have comments disabled anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, this laptop was discarded in a um, in a rural town, which uses a transfer station as a way of dis disposing of household refuse. In the old days, you would bring your refuse to a town dump, which would then be covered over and buried. But those days are over in uh, in the developed world, and now we use what are called transfer stations. And what they do is they take all of your household refuse, trash, uh, regular household trash, uh, furniture, electronics, motor oil, batteries, what have you, and they subcontract with other companies that specialize in each ind individual uh, substance. So we have companies that recycle car batteries, we have companies that take the household refuse and they dispose of it in ways that I don't want to know. Um, and they also have companies that dispose of um, electronics, and they're called e-waste recyclers, and they're popping up all over the world, and um, they provide a service for a fee. So what they would do is they would take this laptop, and they would separate out all the main components, and then they would further separate those components into recyclable materials. For example, LCD screens contain a material, or a metal known as indium. And uh, the hard drive contains, uh, I believe, platinum, aluminum, um, copper, and gold. Motherboard has a lot of copper, a lot of gold, not a lot of gold, but some gold. In the chips, there's also platinum and other various metals. And these are, in quantity, they're worth a great deal of money. So, in order to provide a service to the town, the town has to pay per pound or per ton, depending on the, the agreed upon um, uh, exchange rate, you know, or the depending on how how much they wh whatever depending on the contract they pay per pound to discard a device like this, and when you multiply this by an entire town's worth of equipment over the course of a month, that can add up pretty quickly. So towns generally don't do much to stop individuals from grabbing devices that are left in the uh, agreed-upon drop-off site on the uh, property. So you might have a, some towns might have a sea container or a, an intermodal transportation unit or a transport box. It's a big steel box that they use on cargo ships and railroad cars and uh, trucks and stuff. And you just fill it right up and then they call the company, they come pick it away and they you know, do their thing. But anyone can walk in and out of these things, grab whatever they want. Um, people like me who make videos on vintage technology, I, I do often grab a lot of uh, older items from these trailers uh, whenever I'm taking care of my own household trash. And um, this particular laptop was found in a different town. <clears throat> a friend of mine actually got this for me. He found it when he was, he was, I think he was getting rid of his old TV, and he saw a laptop in there, and he said, ooh, I know who would want that. And he gave it to me. The town doesn't stop anyone from doing this because anything that's taken out is actually saving the town money. You know, um, in the grand scheme of things, this laptop might have cost the town maybe a penny, but it, penny's a penny, right? So they don't stop anybody from taking things out. And it doesn't end there because you don't know where that container is going and who's on the other end of that. So you, you really want to make sure that when you discard a laptop or a desktop or anything that may contain personal data, you want to do your best to ensure that the device is free and clear of any identifiable information before you dispose of it. I'll tell you what I do. Now, I, I do um, IT um, work in a large institution, and one of my responsibilities is disposing of equipment. I've actually contracted with a with a company, and I know the owner of the company, and he's he's a solid guy. He um, he actually invested in a hard drive crushing device. He actually basically bought a uh, um, 
it looks like a giant crosscut shredder. And what it does is it basically shreds anything you put into it, including hard drives. So what he'll do is he'll record serial numbers off of hard drives and shred them for me, and then send me the serial number. So I have a record of any hard drives that I dispose of, and they get destroyed into oblivion. Um, and it's a service that we pay good money for. Uh, but that doesn't always, that's not always the case. You know, you don't know who the recycling company is that your town contracted with, so you don't know where your hard drives are going. Um, in years gone by, I actually did um, discard um, equipment uh, through a, with a company that was similar to that because I and, I and I had to drop their services because I couldn't trust them. But the hard drives that I sent them were wiped anyway, so it wasn't really a big deal. Um, but anyway. This laptop is an identity theft kit. It's the, uh, the too long didn't read version. Um, the previous owner did absolutely nothing to protect his or her data. And I'm going to show you just how shockingly bad this is and just how much stuff is on here and how much damage I could do to this family if I was a malicious person. But I'm taking this as an opportunity to educate you, the general public. I mean, I'm not an educator, but there's some good information here, I think. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, let's start off by just doing a quick examination of this laptop. And I'm going to show you how easy it is for someone like me, or anyone really, anyone can do this, um, to get your information right off the laptop using free utilities downloaded off the internet. Um, so this laptop was in good working order when it was disposed of. Uh, it boots right up goes right into Windows. But the previous owner thought that he was being, or he or she, well, it's a he, it's a, the name is Jeff. I don't know who Jeff is, but Jeff's a general name enough. Um, Jeff decided to put a password on it, thinking that is enough. No one is ever going to get my stuff off this laptop with a password. Mm -hmm. Passwords are impenetrable, right? We'll see. <clears throat> For those of you who are vintage computer fans that are watching this video, this is a gateway. Um, it's about, I think it's from about 2007. It's a Celeron-based machine. I don't know exactly which chip is in it, but uh, it's definitely um, one of the cheaper ones. <laughs> I think it's a 1.6, and it would have been a, uh, I can't think of the name of it. It was a Pentium 4 derivative. It was actually um, one of the crippled Pentium 4s. Not a bad processor, I guess. So anyway, you got a nice little login screen. Let's try a couple of passwords. Password. Now this is how, I'm going to share with you another story that's a true story, 100% true. That um, one of the devices that I got from one of these transfer stations happened to be a uh, server. And I was in the market for a server at the time, and it wasn't even that old. It wasn't even that old. And, um, you know, Click the question. Let's see what the, let's see if they left a password hint on this. Your favorite airline. Are you shitting me? Okay. United. Nope. TWA. Nope. United Airlines. I. Okay. Let's try um, Delta. No. No. Oh, it locked me out. Did it did it lock me out? Or is it going in? Oh, this is getting good. I think it locked me out. Windows will lock you out over So that's okay, because all we have to do is restart the machine. Okay, let's restart it. What the hell? It, it wasn't Delta. How about American? Did I did I try American? Yeah, I just did. What other airlines? JetBlue. No. 
Oops. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Think of another airline here. It's got to be. Um, da -da 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 -do. What are the ones? Um, Southwest. No. AA American Airlines. No, I think it locked me out. Really, it, it that's different. Okay, let's try this again. I oh, will get it. We'll get it. This guy thought he was clever, didn't he? Oh, they'll never guess me password now. But that's okay because we have utilities that can crack passwords. These are free. Offcrack is a free utility that you can download off the interweb. And, uh, all right. Now, let's think of another one. Sure, it's not JetBlue. It could be capitalized, JetBlue. Nope. Hit the... Your favorite airline. American Airlines. No, I tried that. How about U.S. Airways? U.S. Airways, no space. U.S. Air, lock me out. But it doesn't, this is home edition, so it doesn't like really lock you out. Um, it's supposed to, in the professional edition, what it does is it just grays out the uh, login box until you restart the machine. Of course, I don't know uh, if there's, um, all right. Okay, so we gave it a few honest tries, and we didn't get in. So, what we're going to do now, here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to boot it off of the off-crack live CD. Now, this is a Linux live CD, which means that the machine will boot off of it. And it gives us a full operating system. And I'll show you just how how easy it is to use. Uh, spoiler alert, I did try cracking the password before using this disk, but it didn't help me. But that but that wasn't the issue. The issue that that wasn't really a problem. I was able to access all of his files anyway. But there's a, there's a there's a bit of a there's something I'm hiding from you guys. There is a file on here that should allow me to get into this laptop. This is scary. This is just dangerous stuff. I mean, the the sheer naivety of the previous owner is is astounding. It's just astounding. We're gonna use this thumb drive. I'll show you why in a minute. I love these Linux Live CDs. They have some of them have utilities on them that can, you know, solve file corruption problems and you know. In this case, we're using it as a backdoor. Windows doesn't lock the files on the drive if you boot it from an alternate source. The files are still there in plain view. They're not encrypted or anything. So, um, we can get to anything we want without any authentication and uh, just by using a live CD. This is basic stuff. This is nothing advanced. I'm not an advanced person or user. I don't consider myself to be. I primarily am a hardware technician. That's what my job is. That's what I'm paid to do. Um, but I have stumbled my way through you know, Linux here and there as needed sometimes. Okay. Now what this does is as soon as you boot it up, it begins to search for passwords and it tries to crack them using brute force. We see our owner account right here. This is Jeff's account. And it's going to try using brute force. There's the progress bar. It found passwords. Now, the administrator account is empty. We could log in with administrator. Once we get into that, that remember that box that gave us the, alter, the, ID, the, the, the ability to just type in any username? I'm going to show you something else that's, that's pretty scary. You know, I'm not going to do what I was going to do. I'm going to try something different. See, the NT password is empty. The account is not disabled. 
Um, here, let's move this over. We're going to see what accounts are disabled. Okay, so the support account, guest account, and help assistant. But the default administrator account has an empty password field. Watch this. I'm going to reboot this. We're going to take the disk out of the drive. This is, this is, this is elementary. This is so bad. If you think your stuff is safe, it's not. <coughs> Any schmuck, if you throw a laptop in the trash like this, and it winds up in the wrong hands, it's scary stuff. Okay, so if you can't get into Jeff's account, let's see here. There we go. Control Alt Delete into the uh, open login box. Type in administrator. Oh, the account's turned off. Arr! Okay, that's okay. Well, I wanted to try that anyway. Yeah, it's turned off. Alright, we're going to shut her down. And we're going to just restart here. Restart. For the start. Okay, we'll start it up in off crack again, and then we're going to continue on to what we planned on doing in the first place. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to close out the password cracking utility, and we're going to go to, um, there we go, there's my Lexar thumb drive. Oh, cool, I got some cool shit on there. Nice. Now, here's the thing. 30 gig volume, that's our hard drive. And here's basically the root directory of drive C. Within the root directory of Drive C, we have a folder called My Downloads and My Documents, or Documents and Settings. Within that folder, ooh, here's a better one. Let me just make sure there's nothing sensitive that I can't show you. Okay, here we go. There's all of our account folders. Within the Owner folder, we have... Let me just make sure there's nothing sensitive here that would identify the guy, and there's all of this stuff. Okay, within his desktop folder, we have the contents of his desktop. Obviously, the guy has kids, I think. But that's just a little bit of what's here. I'm going to read to you what I'm finding in his documents folder. We have a folder called My Pictures, which has all of his family photos with the names of his kids. Pretty creepy. Um, we have his resume, his address list, his finance report, um, some pictures of his kids and his wife. We've got tax returns for the year 2007, which contain his children's um, social security numbers as they are dependents. We have his income. We have his employer's name, address, and phone number. We have a folder called, or a file called passwords.xls. We're going to use that, now this is where it gets dicey, because I'm going to take that, that file right there, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it on my thumb drive. And we're going to see if the password to get into this machine is on there. I bet you it is. So here we go. We're going to paste that. We're going to open it up. Um, this does not have, this live CD does not have anything that will open an Excel file, so... Let's take the thumb drive out for a moment. Here is his password list. Let's just see how foolish this guy really is. Now, I'm making an example out of him without identifying him because, number one, he does have a right to privacy, but number two, I want to prove a point that you need to be safer and more um, thoughtful when disposing of used equipment. Hey, the file's not there. Oh, crap. It's not there. What the hell? Must have written it to a format that my Mac can't read or something. Let's try that again. Well, it's still blinking. Alright, let's try this again. Maybe it never finished copying. Oh, you know what? I just pulled it. I didn't eject it or anything, so... Alright, here we go. Do, 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 do. Paste. Okay. I'm out. Let's 
try that. <laughs> Let's see if it stayed. There it is. Okay. Now that it's copied to it, we're fine. All right. Here we go. Now I'm going to, again, move the camera away so you can't see what I see because I don't know what's going to come up. We're going to find out what his favorite airline is. At this point, we're really not hacking. <laughs> um, okay, I have his password. Yep, I definitely have his password now. But I've also got his Comcast account number, his Citibank account number, uh, Bank One, Verizon, um, Power Company account, his password, his usernames. I've got his um, Wells Fargo Sprint, Easy Pass, AIG Sun America, and TurboTax. Yeah. Oh, there's more. I have his gross. He has a, a tab. He has a, basically he has the same Excel document that I created for myself. But I've got his gross take-home pay, pre-tax deductions. I've got his income information, how many hours he works. Oh my god. Makes good money. At least he did. I hope he wasn't in data security. That'd be really scary. Um, so, anyway. <laughs> Alright, here we go. <clears throat> that is just... I'm blown away. I can't believe that. So, he, one of those guys who uses the same password for everything. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. All right. Here we go. So we've got his, we got his password from his own device. I just I can't even comprehend how stupid that is. All right. Now there's also the truth that you know the longest password isn't always the best password. Um, the, but the password that he used... Oh my god. Believe it or not, TWA was one of the airlines listed. And I didn't think it would be because it's an old airline that's been, uh, it's been out of business for years. But that was one of his passwords. <laughs> TWA. But I would have never guessed it. I would have never guessed it. Um, and Offcrack didn't either. So that's kind of interesting. My god. This is just beyond dumb. I'm doing this, again, for, um, for reasons of educating the public, because I just want you guys to, be, to realize that, you know, this could be you, you know, and I could be a malicious person who would actually use this information for illegal practices. Um, Wait a second. Maybe that was right. Maybe I was uh, a little bit too confident. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it's actually not working. Interesting. Um, yeah, okay. So it looks like he was smarter than I thought. Hmm. Trans world. No.
Yeah, I guess it, I get, so. I don't have that password, but man, I'm close to it though. I'm close to it. Well, what have we proven so far? Okay, we've proven that his data is definitely not in a safe place. His data is definitely vulnerable. We know that his entire everything is at risk. I mean, he's got his his tax returns. I mean, just those alone are enough to to cause some damage. So, what are we going to do about it? And what are you going to do about it when you're in the situation that this guy was in when it came time to discard his old laptop? What we're going to do is we're going to run a program called DBAN. This is called um, Derek's Boot and Nuke. Or DBAN. I think it's DBAN.org. Yeah. Just Google DBAN. It's, it's there. Use it. It's a great utility. This could save this guy a lot of headaches. Now, again, he doesn't know this laptop is not where he thought it was, and he doesn't know that it's been saved rather than destroyed. So hopefully, um, if he's watching this video and he recognizes the laptop and recognizes what I've pointed out, that you realize that I am doing you a huge service. I'm erasing your drive right now. With a utility that will overwrite the drive infinitely to a... Um, so, the best way to erase a drive is to do one of two things. You can either destroy the drive physically, or you can overwrite it with ones and zeros. Yes, I'm sure there are ways to get data off of a drive at that point, but it has to become a, um, a matter of great concern. Like, it has to be worth somebody's time to take the drive to a lab with an lab, electron microscope to recover the data. Derek's boot and nuke. It's a great, yeah, it is dban.org, that's it. So we're going to just uh, run the auto nuke command. You don't have to know anything to do this. And it's going to search for removable hard drives. Well, hard drives. Make it simple. Um, non removable. Did I say that right? No, I didn't. It's looking for non removable fixed disks. And it's going to erase them. This only has one, and this is going to erase that drive. We're just going to let it fly, and I'm going to end the video there. But, um, so it's searching for devices using, obviously, this is a Linux or Unix-based uh, tool. Device, SDB, SDC. It's looking for USB devices. Actually, it didn't find the hard drive. Interesting. Or did it find it? Let's see. Let's see what it does. What's going to happen? It's not doing a hell of a lot of anything right now. There it goes. Found the hard drive. There we go. I want to reiterate that just erasing your files will not do anything. See, I can take, if, if he erased the drive, just hit format C colon slash S, or if he just erased the documents off of his account, or if he deleted his account, that would have done nothing. Because you can take the drive into, uh, uh, pull it up in any um, data recovery utility. Some are free, some are not. I use one that is a paid utility called Disk, not Disk Warrior, um, Disk first aid? No, wait. Shit. <laughs> Drive rescue, I think it's called. Anyway, disk rescue. I can't, I can't think of it. What is wrong with my brain? Anyway, um, that utility very easily will find any files that uh, have been deleted. Um, Boot and Nuke does something a little bit more secure in that it overwrites the drive with ones and zeros. That's what it does, and it does it well. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Hope this has been even remotely informative to somebody and that it may have saved one more person uh, from possible um, uh, stolen identity. So, thanks again. And this is what it looks like when it starts. Now, if you want to be double sure, 
you can take the hard drive out of the device and smash it. Now the hard drive looks like a little metal box, about that thick, about that big. On a desktop they're easier to find, just take the cover off and you can see it. Um, there are plenty of videos on how to remove a hard drive, I'm sure, but um, that is uh, one way, of course, is to just smash the drive and be done with it. So, all right, uh, that should do it. And we're going to let this thing uh, fly, and I'm going to dispose of the laptop in a more responsible manner without the data. Oh, and it gets much worse. So we are obviously going to be continuing with this um, you know, drive wipage, but... I want to point something out. I did a, a quick Google search of the previous owner's name, and I found him instantly. Um, I have no words. I have no words. The guy is has a degree in technology management. I didn't know such a degree existed, but it's from a legitimate college. Uh, it's a legitimate degree. Um... He works for a high-profile corporation, and he is in charge of other people's data. Words escape me at this point. I just... This guy... My point here is that the guy who, who discarded this laptop knew better. He knew better. He knew better. And he was absolutely careless absolutely careless. There is no excuse. I I just can't believe it. How a low-level IT guy like me has more diligence in discarding used devices, used computer technology. I, I just I can't even I, I can't even describe how stupid the guy is. I mean, he he obviously is one of those arrogant fools who thinks nothing's going to happen and he could have I could have ruined him with what was on here. I mean, there was nothing nothing illegal. Don't worry, I'm just saying. I could have, just with the, the sheer data that was on here, I could have ruined him. But I don't do that. I'm not that kind of guy. But for every one of me, there's ten of them. And one of those could have grabbed this laptop and picked it over and realized what was on it and had a, had a ball. I just, I just want to point that out. <laughs> just scary stuff. But don't worry, I'm not going to expose him. That's not the kind of guy I am. But he's lucky. He's a lucky, lucky man. So, anyway, just scares me. It's like that dental back office machine that I found years ago. I actually, so yeah. Anyway. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't be stupid. Take care of your data. Seriously. In the technology-oriented world we live in today, you are nothing more than a name on a database. And you want to protect that as much as you can. Till then.